LinkedIn is the number one platform that employers and recruiters are using to find and vet candidates. So in this video, I'm gonna share six basic profile setup tips and then three advanced tips to help you maximize your leverage of the LinkedIn platform as a developer searching for a job. Hey everyone, my name is Dave. I'm an iOS developer and I make videos about breaking into the field of software development. Learning the technical skills is just half the battle in getting your first developer job, but learning how to sell yourself to an employer is just as important. A great salesperson is obsessed with understanding the motivations of a prospect and then tailors what they have to offer to those motivations. So if you're searching for a job in a competitive market, it's a really big advantage if you understand what employers care about, which is a lot more than just your resume, and if you know what tools they're using on a daily basis. And one big answer to those questions is LinkedIn. The great thing here is that if you already have a resume put together, it's not gonna take long at all to get a basic profile put together. And compared to the time and effort that it takes to learn the technical skills and build a strong portfolio, this is very low hanging fruit. And finally, if you're still not convinced that all this is worth doing and really just wanted some anecdotal evidence, then know that I got my current job because a recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn. So let's get into the tips. If you already have a basic profile set up, you can skip ahead to the advanced tips. Otherwise, keep watching. I'm gonna hit on six basic areas of a LinkedIn profile by showing you mine and making some comments on each area. And these are all just my own opinions and things that I did. So if you wanna implement some but not others, that is totally up to you. So first off is your picture. So I, I do think that it is a bad look if you don't have any sort of photo at all. Even if it's just a mediocre photo, that is gonna be way better than having no photo at all. Some would maybe argue that you should go out and spend money and have a professional headshot done, but I'm more so just about low hanging fruit and being strategic with your time and money. So my stance for developers is just find a decent quality photo that you already have, throw it up there and then move on to the next thing. Plus software development isn't typically a suit and tie kind of field, so something more informal is fine in my book. Number two is your title. So this is really important because it's the number one way that recruiters find you in their searches. So set that to iOS developer or whatever kind of developer you're trying to be, even if you've never had a job yet. And you should also consider putting a secondary keyword in there again for searches. So for me, I had iOS developer and then the bar character and then the keyword of Swift. And in general, it's best to keep the words seeking or aspiring out of your title. And that's because those really belong in the open to section, which is tip number three. Here's the one area that you do want to indicate that you're looking for a job. So right here where it says open to, click the drop down, and then if you select finding a new job, you'll be able to see that you're able to filter this by location and the, the type of work that you want to say that you're open to. And then this other drop down here also, you can select if you want it to just be shown to recruiters or to your entire network. And I personally didn't see a downside to uh, pushing this out to everyone. And you'll notice that once you do, there's this green stripe that says open to work at the bottom of your profile photo. And this is another important step to make sure that you're coming up in recruiter searches because a lot of times they will filter based on who is open to work and who isn't. And then quick aside on this number of connections here. So that will show the exact number of people that you're connected with up until the point that you hit 500. And being under 500 isn't necessarily a bad thing maybe, but also having 31 connections may not look very good for you. And so it's up to you to kind of decide where you want to fall within that range. But I would recommend starting to connect with people you know personally or professionally and then from there, you can move on to uh, connecting with people that are maybe in your field of software development. Tip number four is the about section. So this is a little bit subjective here, but my approach was to do a, a quick personal tidbit, highlight some technical skills, and then include some relevant links. Unfortunately, you can't make these links clickable, but I do think that it's still worth displaying them for anybody that's checking out your profile. And some people opt to do a really long about section. I personally went with a little bit more of a minimalist approach here, but again, that's totally up to you. I think that it is still an area where it can only help paint the picture of who you are. And so I would recommend spending a little bit of time and a little bit of thought to pull something together for this about section. 
Tip number five is the experience section. So a really quick and easy thing that you can do is literally just copy and paste any bullets that you have from your job history that are on your existing resume. And it's definitely good to make sure that the titles and the dates match up with your resume just to eliminate any potential mismatch concerns. But a lot of times on your resume, you maybe have to cut some bullets just to make sure that things can fit nicely on the page. But here you can add more bullets than your resume because you don't really have the same type of spacing limitations. And you can also link to different things, which I think just looks nice and maybe um, makes you appear a little bit more legitimate on projects or companies that people maybe haven't heard of before. And one final thing here is that if you have personal projects that are a meaningful part of what you have to offer, something that I did just to make sure that they were included on my LinkedIn profile was to make a section called independent app developer and then had a write up uh, about those projects and then also links to those projects. And of course, the definition of independent developer is pretty loose, but I thought that this was just the best way to make sure that some of my top projects were still included on my profile. Final basic profile tip is to leverage the featured section. Here you can basically pin significant posts or links that you want to remain on your profile. And the thinking here is kind of to consider what type of things may elevate you as a candidate. And common things are links to top portfolio projects. So you can see that I have links to two of my uh, personal app store apps. A lot of people will feature a Google Doc or a PDF to their full resume, which I think is a good idea, or really anything else that reflects well on you and what you might want people to know about you. So that wraps up the basic profile tips, and now we're gonna hit on three advanced bonus tips. The first one is that you can actually customize your profile URL. Now by default, LinkedIn gives you a profile URL with your first and last name and then a bunch of random letters and numbers after it. But if you go over here, you can see that you are actually able to set a custom URL. And so similar to how maybe with a Gmail account, minimal tends to be better. It's the same idea here. If you can cut out all the, the random crap after your name, it just looks a little bit cleaner. And when applying to jobs, a lot of applications will have a spot for your LinkedIn profile. And you can also put it on your resume and other areas. And this is one of those pretty minor things that probably won't get you a job, but a lot of small things can definitely add up. If you already have a basic profile set up, then one way that you can leverage it is to engage by sharing posts. And this may seem like a basic thing, but less than 5% of people who have a LinkedIn profile actually share a single post on a monthly basis, which just makes it a great opportunity to show that you're active in your field. And this is the part of LinkedIn that is a lot like other types of social media. And of course, each platform kind of has its own unwritten rules on what you should post and what not to post. But my approach has been to provide a mix of general industry news. And so I've done a post here on uh, Apple's privacy nutrition labels and made some comments on that, as well as share stuff that you have built or worked on. So here's an example of where I took a project that had hit a milestone and I shared a lesson that I learned from it and how that lesson could apply to areas outside of just software development. And to date, you can see that over 5,000 people have viewed this post. So I think it provides exposure for you and positions you as somebody who is engaged and intelligent. And I've had hiring managers interact with my posts and it's just a good way to connect with other developers or other people that are in your field. And I do see this more as a long-term benefit. Uh, networking and engaging with your community isn't something that you can just expect to get a job offer out of after two posts, but it can only help you down the road. And definitely don't prioritize this over some other higher impact areas like building a solid portfolio or a resume. But if you've already done those things, then this is just another thing to again, show employers that you're active and that you really care about what you do. And the final advanced user tip is to like and comment on hiring managers posts. It's really common for hiring managers to be posting all kinds of things on LinkedIn, like company news, articles, job openings, really anything that's moderately related to the company in a positive way, they post. 
but you will notice that these posts hardly get any sort of engagement. So the one second that it takes to like a post or 15 seconds that it takes to read and then comment on a post is a really easy way to stay on their radar before, during, and even after the interview process with a company. Of course, this is all about balance, so you don't wanna overdo this or come across as desperate, but this is something that I still try and do even after landing a job, just to stay on top companies' radars in the case that down the road there's ever an opportunity there. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it has convinced you of the value of at least having a profile set up, but also given you some ideas on increasing your engagement and exposure. I'll have my LinkedIn profile in the description below, so feel free to connect with me there. And then my next video is gonna be a similar style video all about GitHub profile tips, which is also super important for developers. If you've enjoyed this content, like the video to help support the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.